Summary of Love's Labors Lost by William Shakespeare The King of Navarre, Ferdinand, commands that his whole court, including his three lords' domain, Longueville and Baron, take an oath. The oath says that no one can spend time with a woman for three years, so that everyone can learn during that time. The oath also says that everyone will only eat once a day and sleep only three hours a night. Longueville and Domaine quickly agree to the promise, but Biron argues against it, saying that learning too much is bad. He also tells Ferdinand that the Princess of France will be coming to the court on important business. The king says that he will then have to break his own word on mere necessity. Biron finally agrees to sign the oath when he sees how easy it is to get out of it. Ferdinand also tells Baron that the Spanish singer and artist Armado will keep them busy for the three years of the oath. Costard and a letter from Armado are brought in by a police officer named Dole. In breach of the oath of Ferdinand's court, Armado saw Costard with a woman named Jacanetta, the letter says. Costard tries to get out of his punishment by playing with words, but the king tells him to fast for a week and gives Armado the job of making sure he does it. Armado tells his page Moat that he is in love with a base wench named Jacanetta. He is sad because of this love, so he asks Moat to name some great men who have also been in love. Hercules and Samson are called out on the page. Dull comes in with Costard and Jacanetta and tells Armado about the sentence for Costard. Armado says that he loves Jacanetta. Dull takes Jacanetta with him, and Moat and Costard leave. Armado calls love the devil when he is alone on stage, but he finds some comfort in the fact that even Hercules and Samson were touched by love. He says he will turn sonnet and write about how much he loves her. The Princess of France and her helpers, Boyet, Catherine, Rosalind, and Maria, arrive in Navarre. She knows about Ferdinand's promise, so she sends the male Boyet to talk to him. Boyet comes back and tells the princess that they have to camp out in the field because women are not allowed in Ferdinand's court. Ferdinand shows up with his three lords and tells the princess he is sorry. While Ferdinand and the princess talk about trading Aquitaine for something else, Rosalind and Baron flirt by saying funny one-liners to each other. Both Domaine and Longueville, who are clearly in love with Catherine and Maria, ask Boyet about them. Both groups go their separate ways, and Boyet tells the princess that he thinks Ferdinand loves her. Armado has Moat set Costard free so that he can give Costard a letter for Jacanetta to deliver. He gives Costard a coin as payment for the favor, but Costard misunderstands him and calls the coin a remuneration. Then, Baron finds Costard and gives him a letter for Rosalind. Baron complains about how much he loves Rosalind and calls it a curse that Cupid is putting on him. While this is going on, the princess and her servants go hunting. Costard finds them and tells them that he has a letter for Rosalind. But by accident, he gives the letter from Armado to the wrong person. Boyet reads the long letter that Armado wrote to Jacanetta about how much he loves her. The silly letter makes the princess laugh. Maria, Boyet, and Rosalind joke back and forth about hunting terms that have erotic meanings. Everyone but Costard leaves, and Costard is amazed by their sweet jokes, most inconvenient vulgar wit. A teacher named Holofernes, a priest named Nathaniel, and Dole talk about the princess's trip to hunt. Holofernes and Nathaniel switch between English and Latin, which Dole doesn't understand, which makes them laugh. They are joined by Costard. Nathaniel gets a letter from Armado, which is said to have come from Costard. But it is Baron's letter to Rosalind, which has a love poem in it. Holofernes tells Jacanetta to give Ferdinand the letter. Baron is sad at court because he loves Rosalind. He hides when he sees Ferdinand coming. Ferdinand reads the princess a poem he wrote for her. He hides when he hears someone coming. Longueville comes in and reads a poem to Maria about how much he loves her. He also hides when he sees that someone is coming. Domaine comes in and talks about how much he loves Catherine. Longueville jumps out and tells Domaine that he shouldn't love Catherine. Then Ferdinand comes out of hiding and scolds them both. Baron finally steps forward and calls all three of them liars for breaking Ferdinand's promise. 
Then, Costard and Jaconetta come in with the letter from Baron. Baron tries to tear up the letter, but Domain reads it and sees what it says. Baron says that he loves someone, too. As Jaconetta and Costard walk away, the king and his lords talk about their loved ones. Ferdinand asks Baron, who is smart, to explain why they should break their word and go after the people they love. Baron says that the purpose of the promise was to study, and that they will learn more from beauty and love than from any books. Ferdinand, Longueville, and Domain are all convinced to start dating the women they like, which makes them very happy. Ferdinand suggests that they give the French women some entertainment. Nathaniel and Holofernes talk about our motto, and Holofernes attacks Nathaniel's way of speaking and how he says it. Costard and Moat come in with our motto. Moat teases and fools Holofernes and Nathaniel by making fun of them. Armado asks Holofernes what show he should put on for the princess in place of Ferdinand. Holofernes offers the pageant of the Nine Worthies, which is a show of nine well-known people from mythology, the Bible, and history. Armado, Nathaniel, Costard, Moat, and himself all play parts in the play. The princess and her ladies talk about the love letters and gifts they got from Ferdinand and his lords and laugh about them. Boyet comes in and tells them that Ferdinand and his men are going to pretend to be Russian diplomats and come see them. The princess wants all the women to wear masks and trade gifts so that the men will think they don't know who they are. Moat, Ferdinand, Baron, Longueville, and Domain come dressed as Russians. Men try to get women to dance, but when they don't, they tease them. The men then try to win over the wrong women because the gifts the women have given each other have led them astray. The women keep teasing and making fun of the men, and the men leave feeling hurt. Shortly after that, Ferdinand and his lords come back without masks. Ferdinand tells the princess that she is now welcome in his court, but she says she doesn't want to make him break his promise. She says that she has liked living in the field and that a group of stupid Russians just came to see her. Then, Rosalind gives the women a hint that they know the Russians are really Ferdinand and his men dressed up as Russians. Ferdinand tells the truth and says he's sorry. The princess asks Ferdinand to tell her again what he told his lover when he was pretending to be someone else. He does this and Rosalind says that her boyfriend told her this. Ferdinand doesn't know what's going on, but Baron figures out that the women swapped gifts. Costard walks in and says that it's time for the nine worthies to act. Boyet, Baron, and Domain make fun of Costard when he first shows up as Pompey. Nathaniel then comes in as Alexander the Great, and he, too, is made fun of. Holofernes and Moat walk in. Holofernes is dressed as Judas Maccabeus, and Moat is dressed as a young Hercules. The crowd keeps booing and making fun of the artists. Armado comes in dressed as the Greek hero Hector, which gets him more jeers. Costard tells everyone all of a sudden that Jaconetta is expecting Armado's child. Armado is angry and is getting ready to fight Costard. But just then, a messenger named Marcade comes from France to tell the princess that her father has died. Baron tells all the players to leave, and the princess says she's going to France right away. Ferdinand tells her he loves her and asks her to stay. The princess says she thought the men's love was all pleasant jest and courtesy, and she didn't know how seriously they felt about it. The princess says she will think about Ferdinand's proposal if he spends a year at some forlorn and naked hermitage while she takes time to grieve. In the same way, Catherine tells Domain to stop pursuing her for a year before he can try again. Maria makes the same offer to Longueville, but Rosalind has something different in mind for Baron. She tells him he has to spend a year at a hospital making the very sick laugh with his wit. He'll have a chance with her after that. All of the guys agree to these terms. Baron says that their love stories don't have happy ends like those in comedies. Armado comes in and says that the nine worthies were meant to sing a song at the end of their show. All of the players come back and sing the song in two groups, one for spring and one for winter. After each group sings a little song about their season, the play ends. About the author. In 1564, William Shakespeare was born. 
His father was a glove maker and assemblyman in Stratford upon Avon, and his mother was the daughter of a wealthy farmer. At age 18, Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway, who was eight years older than him. Between the mid 1580s and 1613, he wrote many plays, including Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer Night's Dream, Hamlet, The Henriad, Julius Caesar, Othello, and many others. In 1609, he put out a book of sonnets. In the mid 1590s, when London's stages were closed because of the plague, he put out other long works. Shakespeare was said to have died of a fever in 1616, just a month after writing a will in which he said he was healthy. His writings that are still around include almost 40 plays and more than 150 sonnets. His work is still performed, studied, and revised today. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.